Okay, now before we went to morning tea, we struggled with that idea about how do we work out which bit of the, the uh, continuum, except not, I'm not talking about the deceased continuum, I'm talking about our continuum in our school, which bit does my team have to um, take responsibility for? And I've got the slide here and I hope that you're aware of them. I think that we talked about them the first time um, that we came together um, back at wherever it was the other, um, you know, the first series of sessions that Peter and I did. But when I go out to schools and teachers, you know, I get stuck in that room with the people with the Nelson books under their arm trying to do planning. One of the things that I say to teachers straight away is, have you had a look at these overviews of cal uh, methods of calculation, reasoning, multiplicative thinking now? These were sent through as handouts for you and they're available as well um, on the, should say deep, dis I don't even know how to say it, deceased makes sense for me, website. But, um, <laughs> um, I got Lena deliberately to print them out, that you got them the, you know, the first time around, got um, Lena deliberately to print them out even though they're on there. Because like I said before, if your school planner is the most gorgeous document in the world and has the most beautiful hyperlinks but nobody ever uses them, then it, what's the, the use of any of that? If you're a hard copy school, then the hard cold facts are you need to give, make sure the teachers have got the hard copies. But by all means, tell them that they need to learn how to use the internet, but for, in the meantime, give them the hard copies if that's what's needed. So if your teachers are going to be pushed into the room somewhere with the books under their arm to do some planning, please, please, please make sure that they are aware that these documents exist. And for some of them, that will help them work out what some of the chunk is that they're supposed to be delivering at their level of the um, curriculum. Now, the other thing that's up there, and you got a, um, a copy, I think it came through as this beautiful blue thing. These are the indicators of progress. Again, they're up on the web, and if you click onto these, these ones are hyperlinked, and there are a bunch of activities and teacher notes behind. I can tell you, when I go to schools that are in distress about the planning stuff, teachers who have just about thrown their arms up in despair, can't work out what to teach anymore. I say, listen, if you teach nothing else, teach these indicators of progress. Make sure that your kids go through the activities on the indicators of progress. These were deliberately plucked out by um, the education department and put there because they are seen as places where kids stumble in their learning. It's like, you know, shout loudly here because kids have trouble with this stuff. So if you teach nothing else, teach at least the indicators of progress. Tell your teachers that as a beginning. Make sure that when you, they're putting the curriculum for the term together, that they're aware of what's here under the indicator of progress at their level in that particular concept. And you know, all the work is done for you in those indicators of progress. If you go on there, there are fantastic activities. As I said, fabulous um, teacher notes about why kids stumble here and what you should be looking for and what you should be thinking about when kids get to this particular part of the curriculum. So for teachers who are, I mean, all of us should know that, but particularly those teachers who are struggling along trying to work out what should I do, do that. These are great to use as assessment tasks as you, as you go along too. That if the kids can do these, then you've probably done a bit of a champion job. That they've you know, gotten over the stumbling block. If they got over the stumbling block, chances are they got over the stuff that you know, wasn't such a big stumble for them. So the fact that, um, now I have to say D-E-E-C-D. -E -E <laughs> The fact that deceased to put them up there on the web is a wonderful thing, but lots of teachers don't go up and have, you know, don't, for whatever the reasons, and I'm not going to smack anyone over the hand about that, 
a lot of teachers don't get time to go up and have a look and see what's on the web. So it's your job as the leaders to make sure that they're aware that this stuff's there and if necessary, print it out and give them the hard copy. Some people are hard copy people and if it's given to them, they'll do something about it. Okay, now, you've been here for a deceased before, have you? <laughs> um, one of the schools that I worked with last year were grappling with the stuff about how can we reduce the, the bit of the curriculum that our staff, the group that I was working with, I, can't, I think it was the year ones, we'll see in a minute, one twos, how can, I, how can we reduce and focus ourselves on what it is we're supposed to be doing in number? And I had that school do exactly that task that you did before morning tea, and we found out exactly what you found out, that it's a bit all over the shop. So I got those teachers together and we looked up the um, VELs and we looked up the learning focus statements and we looked up everything we could. And as a team, they sat down and wrote what they call a ready reckoner for number. And I'm going to put it up here. They found this very, very helpful for the teachers. I must have been working with the level ones and the level twos. Um, I see every time I put something up, people keep scribbling down and um, this is going to go up on the... Where does it go? Somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere great. It'll go up on the website, but I'll also email it to all of you. Yeah, so you can... I'll email it to me. I will, I will. <laughs> um, yeah, so you don't feel compelled unless, you know, I throw a few pearls in that aren't written up there. And there's always hope. Um, the teachers found this very, very helpful. It's like a fabulous version of the, what you did just before recess because this is a researched version for them. It was only about number and the teachers could then cut that out, put it in a little frame on their desk and remain focused on these are the critical things that my team has identified as my responsibility for teaching in number at this level. And they didn't go into enormous descriptions, as you can see, because that would turn it into, my God, the vowels. <laughs> they kept it short and simple. They had the discussions about it so that they all had a common understanding. What were they talking about when they're talking about coins? And if they needed to go and see exactly what did that mean, they could go and look up the vowels. But they found this very, very helpful. I put it up here because your teams may find that very, very helpful to do a similar thing when they're doing planning so that you see it's not that idea of just sitting down for an hour with a bunch of resources piled up to the ceiling and write frantically everything you can about maths for the term is like all over the shop. What a mess that is. Better off to devote some time in your professional learning teams. Those ones after school where you talk about rubbish bins and bus duty and all that stuff, lose that, put on a bit of paper and send it around the email and instead spend an hour doing some of this kind of stuff, creating a ready reckoner of the key things. That's, you know, not everything is on there, but this is what the teachers identified as their key stuff. 